Kobe Sportswear, Canadian owned and manufacturer of high quality sports apparel and sold locally by Nova Trophy. Now located in Bears Lake and celebrating 40 years of service. Stop by today to get your team dressed in Kobe's best. John Moore alongside the director of scouting, NHL Central Scouting, Dan Meyer. And Dan, good to see you back in Halifax. We got a Dan here this afternoon, a lot of a lot of uh, draft eligible players, uh, but good to see you back here. You enjoy coming to Halifax? I think everyone on the scouting circuit enjoys coming to Halifax because you can basically walk anywhere. You're close to the rank and the hotels are close, restaurants are close by. So it's a, it's a fun place to come to and watch games. And when Halifax has uh, good teams like they've had in recent years, then it's, it's a fun part of doing the job here. Speaking of the moose sets, let's talk about the uh, the draft eligibles uh, again. It's February, uh, but uh, let's begin with Philip Zadina, currently ranked number two in his season. Well, he's ranked number two, but our top three kids are all in the mix to be number one on our on our final ranking. And like his World Junior really solidified him as being one of the most skilled players available for this draft class, but he just has that radar to know how to get open, and he's got such a good finishing shot on the play. Uh, every time he's on the ice, he's got a good chance to create a scoring opportunity for them. But obviously, as we mentioned February, he could move up. He could, he could, he could drop down. He's in the mix for the top three. He could finish number one. He could stay at number two. <laughs> Let's talk about the defenseman, Jared McIsaac. Uh, again, uh, projected first rounder, uh, I believe 12 at the last ranking. Yeah, we, we've got him in the top half of the first round. I don't think he's going to move anywhere. He's, uh, he's one of those very dependable, very reliable guys. I, I think he has a, a really like long fuse to where you don't really see him lose it. But one of the things we've been encouraged by seeing in his game in the second half here is that he's playing with a lot more authority, being a lot more assertive, especially when he's defending. We know he has a smart, effective game at the offensive blue line. So he's a pretty complete package for NHL clubs. Benoit Olivier grew a forward, uh, ranked a little later in the first round. But he's, he is, and he, uh, again, he, he, I don't see him leaving the first round, and I don't see him getting past the first round with NHL clubs. Uh, when I talk to coaches on other teams, when you talk to the Mooseheads coaches and just with other scouts, he, he's the type of player that can play basically anywhere in your lineup. Uh, at the NHL level, he's likely going to be you know, a second, third line center. But what I think will happen is that the higher skilled players in the game are going to want him on his line. And so I think with any coach, with any team that he's on, the respect, just the way he plays the game, does all the little details well, he'll gradually move his way up the lineup no matter where they start him. Dan, the last time you were in town, we talked about a defenseman with the Acadie Bathurst t that Noah Dobson. And you said at the time he's trending up. He is now among the top ten. Yeah, he, he continues to do so. I just saw two games in Bathurst there, and he's got the ability just to take control of the game out there. And when they needed a push to generate some offense there, he, he's, he's a defense-first type of player, but he's got very good offensive skills, offensive instincts, and he moves the puck so well. So he was able to generate some offense for them when they needed it. You know, he just his game just, he just needs to get physically more stronger, and I think if he had a little bit more power behind his shot, then his numbers would dramatically be higher. There are four, four Voltageur in the lineup here this afternoon, uh, draft eligible. Uh, certainly looks like the projected top three rounds. Uh, but Joe Valeno traded, acquired by the Voltageurs. Uh, he sits in the first round. Yeah, and, and Joe's one of these players there. He's got exceptional speed and quickness, and he sees the ice real quick. So. He's often making plays that his teammates aren't even ready for yet. They, they haven't caught up. They haven't seen what he sees. So he's got, uh, he, he sets up a lot of guys. There's not always the finishing result there. And, you know, when he gets his chances, he's got good offensive skills himself. But I do think at the higher levels, when he gets playing pro alongside, you know, highly skilled players every night, he's, he's going to do a lot of damage. I'm going to go with the defenseman, Nicholas Baudin. Uh, again, uh, a defenseman who uh, looks like a two-way defenseman? Well, he, he is. He, he's a little undersized, but nowadays that's not as big a deal, even though his hair is growing longer. It's not making him look any taller. But he's, he's got really good instincts in the game to move the puck. 
And when you can make that first pass out of the zone that generates an odd man rush, creates opportunities, and he's really quick and smart at the offensive blue line. So when he gets the puck, the puck's going to get to the net and they're going to get a scoring chance from it. So I, I do think he's responsible to a guy, but he has a very good offensive instinct to his game. And the other defenseman, the Drummondville defenseman, Xavier Bernard? Bernard has the ability to to play in all situations as well. I don't know that his offensive upside is going to get uh, to the point where he puts a lot of numbers on the board, but he makes really smart plays and he gets the puck to the players that can make the plays.